What's up guys, back again with another UFC video on the UFC 211 card, Miocic versus Dos Santos 2. So, this video is going to be about the main card, five fights on the main card, as you guys can see right there above. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started here with the uh, first fight on the uh, pay-per-view. So we got Jocko versus David Branch. Let's go ahead and look at their pages real quick. Uh, if you guys don't know David Branch, uh, you know, he's been in the UFC before. Obviously, he's now coming back to the UFC. Um, he was or is the two-time a two-time uh, division champion over there at WSOF. Uh, he was the 185 pound champ and the 205 pound champ. So, you know, he's pretty much the uh, middleweight and light heavyweight uh, champion over there for WSOF. So that guy that guy was holding uh, two titles. So, yeah, that guy's uh, been on a tear uh, over there lately at WSOF. Um, here's Jocko's page. Very good record, 19-1. and one. Obviously only one loss. Uh, obviously, you know, Poland fighter has that Polish striking. Uh, I haven't seen too much of that aggressive ground game that they're talking about, but you know he does ha he does have some good striking. Um, what else? As you can see, he's on a five fight win streak right now. His last fight and last win was against Tallest Ladies, who who is obviously one of those uh, high level type of guys. I'm not too sure. If, I think I think Ladies won his last fight though. Let me check that. Oh yeah, he won that last fight against Sam Alvey. But yeah, anyways, Jocko pretty much outstruck him and also took him down past his guard and stuff. You guys can see right there in the stats. But yeah, Jocko just, you know, outstriking him. Ladies didn't do much at all. And before that, this guy had a first round knockout on Tam, Tam Dan McCrory. But Tam Dan has shown, you know, his chin's not too good now nowadays. Um, this guy's last loss was to Magnus Seedenblad, who I think is, I want to say that guy's like, kind of like a striker and or something like that like some sort of striker and he got the second round submission on him but that was you know like three years ago already is this guy even a striker or not let me check uh i don't i'm not too sure if this tells you like their knockout percentage or whatever yeah i guess this guy was just kind of like well-rounded or whatever either either way that guy was able to beat him um now for David Branch, 20 and 3 record, another, you know, another solid record there. Uh, as you can see, he likes the takedowns. And this is in his UFC uh, career though, not, you know, WSO, WSOF career. Uh, third termination, technique power, 35 years old. He's going to have a, a slight reach advantage. He has 81 inch reach, which is which is pretty fucking good. That's like heavyweight reach at 185. Um yeah, I wouldn't really care too much about that. Anyway, this is this is old shit right here, guys. 2011, 2010. Um, there we go. Seven wins by submission. Five rear naked choke. Dar spawn flu choke. Five by knockout. Five first round finishes. And he's right now he's on a 10 fight win streak. And here's his wins that he has outside the UFC. He got Yushin Okami on that list. Vinny Magahez. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, black belt in jiu-jitsu under, Ren under Renzo Gracie. This guy, from what I've seen in his last fight, has good takedowns and really good jiu-jitsu. And he also has some good striking also. This guy seems just to be well, you know, this guy just seems to be just well-rounded everywhere. So, this is a hard fight for Jocko. Uh, Jocko is the uh, the favorite here. He's at minus 149. But, you, you know, you can't really count out David Branch. I mean, this guy, like I said, this guy was a... A two division champion over there at w WSOF, and obviously WSOF isn't like the highest competition over there. But you know this guy looked pretty good over there. Uh, you know, really well rounded. Uh, when he strikes, mixes up his takedowns well and his ground game. So this guy pretty much does it all. Jocko is much more of a striker. Uh, yeah, he pretty he pretty much just is a striker. He doesn't wrestle too much. Uh, his take on the fence looks good here on paper. But, you know, I think David Branch is going to be able to take him down, guys. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys my pick. I'm going to go ahead and pick David Branch, uh, another underdog pick here. Uh, I'm going to play him on DraftKings also. He's pretty cheap. Uh, I think David Branch here could, I don't want to say like outstrike, but I think he's going to be able to outpoint Jocko. Both these guys don't really get a lot of finishes, uh, especially Jocko. That guy, you know, usually in the UFC, this guy only has one finish. 
and all the rest of his wins are uh, you know by decision so both these guys don't really finish too often David Branch when he finishes usually it's with a submission um, but yeah I see this fight going to decision decision guys and I think David Branch is gonna be able to mix in his strikes uh, you know with the takedowns or whatever you know he's gonna be striking mixing that takedown score those points on DraftKings and you know I think he's gonna be able to win the fight like that and if he does get Jocko down I mean Jocko actually does have uh, I think it said on his page he had a a brown belt right here yeah BJJ brown belt but I mean look at that 5% wins by submission so and he has 20 fights already so yeah I mean what can really what can really take away from that so yeah David Branch is gonna be a lot better on the ground if Branch gets him to the ground he's gonna be able to pass his guard and possibly work work for some sort of submission but either way I just see David Branch you know using his good striking to set up those takedowns staying on top getting that top control and just winning the round so I, see, I do see the fight going to decision so uh yeah David Branch uh by decision guys that's gonna be my pick now for the next fight we got Frankie Edgar versus uh up, up and comer Yair Rodriguez let's go ahead and check out their pages real quick there we go yeah so here's uh Edgar's page last fight last win against Jeremy Stevens uh, pretty much outpointed him had those takedowns uh, I think at one point Jeremy actually hurt him in that fight uh, obviously you know Edgar's getting a little bit older now 35 years old and whatnot uh, here's right Yair Rodriguez only 24 years old so this guy's you know 11 years younger obviously that's gonna be an advantage 11 and 1 record only has one loss and it wasn't in the UFC I think yeah I'm pretty sure he's he's undefeated here on the in the UFC uh, Anyways, 11-1 record. Obviously, summary is all about stand-up. Uh, good reach advantage. Also, he's gonna have here three-inch reach advantage. He's, he's a lot taller. Um, obviously, this guy's coming off a win against BJ Penn. I mean, BJ looked looked pretty horrible in that fight. It's pretty pretty sad to see. To you know, it's pretty sad to see BJ Penn just pretty much get picked apart and then finished. Um, before that, he had a good outing against Alex Caceres. Pretty much landed double the amount of strikes there. Um, had a knockout win against Andre Philly, who was one of those up and coming type of guys. Um, <coughs> um, so yeah, Rodriguez looking good here. Um, so yeah, guys, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough fight for Frankie Edgar because Rodriguez has that good reach, and he has really good unorthodox striking. You know, he throws a lot of crazy kicks and stuff like that. So you know, Edgar's gonna have problems closing the distance to get the takedowns. And from what I've seen from Yair Rodriguez, it looks like he's really improving, you know, his takedown defense and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's going to be hard for Edgar to close the distance, like I'm saying, and, and to take him down. Uh, if, Fr if Frank Edgar tries to just, you know, box with him on the feet, R Rodriguez is going to be able to clip him a lot easier because of the reach of this, uh, the reach advantage that he got. So, yeah, guys, I really like uh, Rodriguez in this fight. I think he's going to be able to get it done. Uh, if you look at the odds here, Edgar's a slight favorite. Um, obviously he's a veteran rank top uh, rank top two right there um, but yeah guys I'm gonna go ahead and pick Yari Rodriguez in this fight uh, it's gonna be hard to finish Edgar so I think Rodriguez uh, wins this fight by decision so yeah Rodriguez by decision all right now for the next fight guys another good fight here you know this cards pretty pretty stacked um, we got Damian Maya versus Jorge Masvidal obviously everybody's now on the uh, on the Masvidal hype, you know, I, I've been on on this guy's hype or whatever you guys want to call it, you know, for a while now. This guy's really sharp boxing and extremely well-rounded everywhere. Um, but now he's gonna fight, you know, pretty much the number one contender here, Damian Maya. Um, obviously, this guy's all about his jiu-jitsu. Uh, obviously, he's getting older, but you know, his age doesn't really show too much in his fights because he's just, you know, finishing people. Um, it has been about pretty much a year since this guy last fought as you guys could see there uh, against Carlos Condit I mean that seems like a while back already you know the time passes by really quick and yeah it's pretty much been almost a year since he last fought um, but I mean look at this shit I mean this guy's on uh, one two three what is that six fight win streak right now obviously Damon Maya is looking good and you know most of the time Maya is getting that you know submission win 
Uh, obviously he tapped out Carlos Conde very early in the fight, first round against Matt Brown. He had he got that third round submission. Also, it seems like Maya is able to take down everybody he fights. Even the guy he lost against, Roy McDonald, he was able to take him down twice. Uh, yeah, so this guy, you know, he seems to be able to take down everybody. Like, doesn't even matter who you are, this guy's gonna be able to take you down. Uh, which is obviously gonna suck for Masvidal, because obviously uh, Dana Maya is gonna have, be a lot a lot bigger and a lot stronger on the ground um, anyways look look at what he's saying about Jorge Masvidal here he says that he thinks Masvidal is a very tough experienced well rounded opponent tough challenge for anyone and he's game in all areas and all this stuff and he's saying his stand up is obviously very good but I don't underestimate his grappling at all um, now let's go ahead and move on to Jorge Masvidal's page his records not as not as pretty, but I mean, he has a shit ton of fights, and it's still a pretty fucking good record right there. 32, 11, and 0. Summary is hard. Um, we got here. Yeah, he's on a 3 5 win streak. Last two wins, he, he's been finishing opponents. So obviously, like I said, everybody's now starting to get on the hype. Um, but I've been I've been uh, picking this guy for a while now. Um, anyways, so yeah, Cerrone versus Masvidal. You know, I picked Masvidal in that fight all day. You know, I thought Masvidal was going to be able to destroy him on the feet because Cerrone always struggles against good boxers, and, you know, he got lit up. Um, but, yeah, that was a very impressive win for Masvidal, guys. He got that second-round knockout, and before that, he finished Ellenberger. Um, so, yeah, this guy's obviously looking very good. Um, like I said, Masvidal is pretty well-rounded, guys. It's going to be a tough fight for Masvidal. Also for Damian Maya because obviously if Masvidal beats Maya, Maya is going to lose that title shot that he should have probably already had. So dangerous fight for Maya. Uh, Maya obviously can win the fight here, guys. You know if he gets the takedown and he gets that quick submission, uh, obviously he's going to be able to get the win. But man, it's going to be hard to take down Masvidal. Carlos Condit doesn't have the takedown defense of Masvidal. Uh, Matt Brown also doesn't have that good takedown defense. So it's going to be a hard fight for Maya. Uh, it's getting older, slowing down. Been almost a year since his last fight. Masvidal is, you know, he's very confident right now. And, man, I, I still like Masvidal in this fight, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and take Masvidal here. For sure, way better stand-up on the ground. Maya's going to have the advantage. But I do feel uh, Masvidal will be able to survive off his back or on his back uh, at least for, for one round. And once the second round starts, Maya's going to be a little bit more tired. And that's where Masvidal will be able to stuff the takedown and start lighting him up on the feet, guys. I, I can't see Maya, you know, like keeping the pace up with the takedowns and, and working him on the ground and whatnot for like two rounds. So, I mean, obviously Maya could, good, could get the submission, but I think it's going to be hard to tap out Masvidal. Um, so, yeah, guys, I like Masvidal here. I think Maya is going to gas after, after the first round. If he can get the submission after the first, I think it's going to be all Masvidal after that. Uh, maybe maybe Maya could last, you know, a round and a half. And then that's when Masvidal starts taking over. But, yeah, I see Masvidal coming out on top, guys. So, I'm picking Masvidal to win the fight here. And I do think he's going to get uh, a knockout here or a, a finish, a TKO. Um, I think it's going to come. Could be a third round or a second round. Let's go ahead and just say Masvidal, uh, second round knockout, guys. So, that's my pick. All right, next fight uh, for the strawweight title, guys. We got Joanna, Joanna Janjacek versus Jessica Andrade, which is obviously the co-main event here. Another very good fight. Like I said, this card's pretty stacked. Um, let's go ahead and just open up their pages real quick. Obviously, Joanna's uh, a sharp multi-striker with really good take on the fence. Multi-boxing. Okay, okay. Uh, in her last fight against Carolina, Carolina, you know, obviously she won the fight. Uh, Carolina caught her at one time, but other than that, Joanna won the fight pretty handily. As you can see, Joanna has a crazy fucking output 171 significant strikes. I mean, she lands a lot of fucking punches, man. This girl's all volume, doesn't have a lot of power in her shots, but good technique and a lot of volume, guys. She's very sharp on the feet, yeah, just an excellent striker all around. Uh, Andrade now, as you can see her summary, they got her as kicks and ground and pound. Uh, she's actually a little bit younger than uh, John JJ. It's kind of crazy how Andrade is barely only 25, guys, and she's been in the UFC for a while. Uh, started her UFC career very, you know, at a young age and whatnot, you know. Um, 
Anyways, her last fight against uh, Angela Hill, as you can see, she landed a shit ton of volume also. So she's just like Yan Jacek, in which she likes to throw a lot of volume. Uh, the only thing is Andrade is not as sharp with her striking, guys. She's more of a kind of like a brawler. Uh, obviously, her technique gets a little better, but, you know, she's more of a brawler with a lot of volume. Kind of like a Lineker. Lots of volume and also good power in her shots. So you can see against Angela Hill... 131 significant strikes landed and two takedowns landed in the fight. Uh, Angela Hill actually did not do bad at all in that fight. I was actually very impressed with Hill in that fight. Um, but before that, she had a very impressive fight against Calderwood. Finished her in the first round. Takes her down easily. Uh, against Panay, she destroys her very quickly in, in the second round. So you can see she lands a shit ton of strikes. Uh, I'm not even going to go over her bantamweight career. But she didn't do that bad over there either. Um... So yeah guys, I like this fight. Both these girls throw a lot, of, a lot of volume. And actually, if you can see by the stats there, Andrade actually has a little bit more strikes landed per minute. And she's also a little bit more accurate. She does absorb more damage and her defense is not as good. Um, but Andrade is going to have the power advantage here guys. And she's going to have, obviously, the grappling advantage also. Good takedowns. I mean, she has very high takedown accuracy. She takes down, she takes down these girls at Strawberry very easily. Like like nothing you know so I think it's gonna be a very tough fight for Joanna and you know usually I want to pick Joanna but I mean I really like Andrade guys so I'm gonna go ahead and pick Andrade on this fight I think she has a good stylistic matchup here to be able to beat the champion I think Andrade got the volume she got the power the grappling uh, you know with the takedowns and whatnot the submissions the only thing the only thing that kind of worries me about Andrade is maybe her gas tank. And we already know Joanna could go hard all five rounds and throw a lot of volume. Now, I think Andrade is going to have to get that finish early. Or not get the finish early, but she's going to be able to have to, like, outstrike her and tire Joanna down by using her, uh, her wrestling also. Because I don't think Andrade is going to be trying to keep the fight on the feet the whole time. Because as we, could, as we saw in the Calderwood fight, obviously Calderwood's a sharp striker. And she's also longer. And Andrade pretty much closed the distance on her very easily. And took her down and worked for the submission. And, you know, try to use that grappling. So I think it's going to be very similar here with jo with jo Joanna Janjacek. She knows Joanna's a sharp striker. So she knows she's going to have to uh, use her, her takedowns to get to, to be able to win the fight. You know what I'm saying, guys? Um, but on the feet, Andrade still has a lot of power. Hits the body really good. Hits the head and the body. So... You know, I, I like Jessica in this fight. So I'm going to pick uh, Andrade to win here. Uh, I think Jessica wins. I'm going to go ahead and say... I'm going to go ahead and say it's going to be like... Maybe like a third round finish or fourth round, guys. Uh, man, it's a hard, hard fight to pick. I mean, it could just go to decision. Honestly, it's a strawway fight. You know what? Let's go ahead and say Andrade gets a, a third round submission. Uh, a third round submission win, guys. All right, guys. So that's going to be it uh, for that fight. Let's go ahead and move on to the main event. We got Stipe Miocic versus Junior Dos Santos. It's going to be a quick pick here, guys. Nah, nah, nah. Actually, never mind. I don't want to make it too quick. Um, sorry, guys, for the long video already. Uh, but if you're still uh, tuned in, let's go ahead and get started here. So we got Stipe versus Dos Santos. Both these guys fought already. It was an excellent fight uh, their first time. Let's go ahead and open up their pages here. So we can check out, you know, the, the statistics of that fight. A lot of people, some people actually thought, you know, Stipe won the fight, but, uh, you know, it was a tough fight for Junior, but I thought Junior won. Yeah, I mean, just look at the strikes advantage here, guys. As you guys could see, yeah, I mean, yeah, Dos Santos won the fight, guys. I mean, just just based on statistics, you can see he won the fight, but even just watching the fight, Stipe did really well in the first and second round, and after that, it looks like Dos Santos beat him third, fourth, and fifth rounds. Um, but yeah, that was a, obviously a really good fight. Since then, Stipe has looked really good. Four fight win streak since then. Had that first round knockout against Overeem, which is one of my favorite fighters. You know, it's kind of fucked up to see. Obviously, Overeem got caught on the ground uh, against Verdum. He, he caught him. He caught him early uh, and got that. <coughs> excuse me. And got that. Uh, got that quick finish there. And against Arlovsky, he also finished them off very quickly. And against Mark Hunt, pretty much just battered him down, took him down, and just battered him on the ground and got that late finish. Uh, so, yeah, Stipe's looked really, uh, really impressive as of late. Let's go ahead and look at Dos Santos here, 18-4 record. 
Obviously, we already know this guy's all about his boxing and all about that knockout power. Uh, his last fight against Ben Rothwell pretty much just outf outstruck him. Pretty much just beat his ass. I'm actually surprised Rothwell landed that much amount of strikes there. But yeah, pretty much Dos Santos outstruck him. You know, outboxed him. Uh, just way better on the feet. You know, Rothwell... I remember a lot of people were putting hype on Rothwell for like for a minute there. Like everybody was like on the Rothwell hype. Like man, that that guy's not that good, man. Uh, either way, Dos Santos outboxed them. Before then, he got knocked out by Overeem. But I mean, no shame in getting knocked out by Overeem. Overeem has a lot of power, excellent striker. And if Overeem, Overeem can't, uh, if Overeem doesn't get caught early or get you know clipped clean on the chin, you know we, he's shown to be a very dangerous fighter with his uh, with his style. Um. Anyways, so yeah, guys, uh, as for the pick here, I mean, it's a close fight. Both these guys, really good boxing. Dos Santos, really great take on the fence. And Stipe, also a good wrestler. So, I mean, we saw in the first fight, Stipe really tried to go for the takedowns. But, you know what, real quick, let's just go ahead and go on to uh, the statistics of the takedowns for that fight. I heard that Dos Santos stuffed like 18 takedowns. And, yeah, Stipe only got one takedown, guys. All right, here we go. Here it is. All right, here we go. Yeah. So as you can see, Dos Santos actually had a takedown in the fight. Uh, and Stipe, he went for 18 takedowns, guys. 18 fucking takedowns, and he only got one. Uh, what that pretty much says is it's hard to take down Dos Santos. Everybody knows Dos Santos has a really great take on the fence. Um, and, yeah, pretty much Stipe, I want to say, gassed himself out. So... You know, obviously, gassing himself out, going for those takedowns so much. Obviously, Dos Santos was able to just piece him up the rest of the fight. Now, the question is here, is Stipe going to go back to that same type of style, trying to really get those takedowns in Dos Santos? Because we already know Dos Santos is going to be really hard to take down. And he's also pretty hard to hold down. So, you know, just on uh, just on straight boxing and stand-up, Dos Santos is, I want to say for sure, the better boxer, guys. Uh, I, I know Stipe got good boxing, but... Dos Santos, I believe, uh, has more volume, has faster hands, and a little bit more power than Stipe. Uh, we know Stipe got big power, but you know I feel Dos Santos is the better boxer. So I mean, if the fight, if this fight, if this time the fight stays uh, standing the whole time and Stipe doesn't go for much takedowns, uh, you know Dos Santos is gonna be able to box him up and get that finish, guys. I mean, we saw Stipe get dropped in the overing fight. Which is another reason I'm picking Dos Santos on this time, guys, or on this fight. Uh, Stipe got dropped against Overeem. Overeem could have finished them if he would have went with punches instead of the guillotine. Uh, and, yeah, you know, this guy's chin could be a little bit rattled still. And I think Dos Santos here, if he clips him early, he's going to get the knockout. So I'm picking Dos Santos on this uh, on this fight, guys. I don't think this time it goes by all five rounds. You know, someone's going to get knocked out here this time. Both these guys are coming in hungry. Uh, obviously, Stipe is confident. Dos Santos is looking very confident also. It's going to be a good fight, but it's not going to go five rounds. So I'm picking Dos Santos. I think he's going to get the early finish, guys. I think he's going to clip him early. And, you know, he's not hes not like fucking over him. You know, he's not, he's not going to go for a submission. He's going to pound him out, he's gonna, and he's going to get the finish. So Dos Santos, I'm going to go ahead and say this is going to go... You know what? The first round might be a little bit slow. It depends how they come out. Could be a first round knockout, guys, but I'm going to go ahead and say Dos Santos gets a, uh, a second round KO. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for my picks on the whole card. Let's go ahead and recap the main card picks. I got David Branch uh, by decision, Rodriguez by decision, Masvidal, uh, second round knockout, Andrade, third round submission, and Dos Santos, second round knockout. All right, guys, so that's it for my picks here on the uh, UFC 211 card. Uh... You know, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think about my picks. Uh, also, subscribe for more videos, more content. Uh, and if you guys play DraftKings, check out the links below in my description. Uh, join DraftKings or whatever. If you guys are good with your picks, you guys can make some money. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching and enjoy the fights. And catch you guys on the next video.